Jansen Harris. I'm here with the Just Good Network. Joining me is anchor and reporter for 92.9 The Game, Caleb Johnson. What's up, Caleb? How's it going? Going well for me. That's good. That's good. That's good. Okay, talking Atlanta United, Saturday they defeated New England 1-0 at home. They did their thing, looked dominant. Philadelphia, who they're going to play, they defeated the New York Red Bulls 4-3, and they rallied back from a 2-0 deficit, which was extremely impressive. Now, when they played back in August, Philly won 3-1. Atlanta, they switched up their formations a a couple times. What what formation do you expect Atlanta United to be in in this matchup Thursday? Well, I think because of injuries, I think they're going to be forced to to kind of stick with that four three three. And I mean, essentially, the only man you're going to be able to replace uh, Michael Parkhurst with is going to be Florentine Pogba. I mean, it just it, it's kind of an unfortunate position to be in where you have such a talented team, but because of how the U.S. men's national team recklessly used Miles Robinson, and now this massive shoulder injury with Michael Parkhurst, yeah, I think you're gonna you're gonna go with that four three three Florentine Pogba for for Parky. Speaking of Parkhurst, let, let's talk about that real quick. Dislocated his shoulder in stoppage time, out for what two weeks. Do you think he, he announced he's going to retire after the season? Do you think this is the last we've seen of him? Absolutely. Uh, it's one of those unfortunate things. If you if you really think about it, I mean, that, that regular season match against New England was supposed to be his send-off. That was supposed to be the, you know, Michael Parker's rise off into the sunset, the playoffs, you know, you will see him. In a you know in a nice suit, <laughs> and then everything you know was was supposed to work out. But like I said, U.S. men's national team directly disobeyed orders from Atlanta United, which said if you're not going to use uh, Miles Robinson, then don't do anything with him. Instead, they have him do some calisthenics and run sprints after the game. He gets hurt, and then you're you're forced. To go to your captain, Michael Parker, uh, who unfortunately, I mean, just what an awful way to to uh, to go out of the league. Because I I I think that's going to be it for him. Thankfully, uh, I was I was able to be in the uh, Mercedes Benz, uh, you know, at the stadium for the game. It was really cool as he's walking off the field. You know, everybody essentially stood up and gave him a standing ovation. Uh, because you just you felt so bad that that would be the way that he exits, and I, I don't even think at the time you, you know you really thought about it. Because uh, honestly, being in the stadium, we all thought it was a leg injury until they start carrying him off the field. Once they start carrying him off the field, then it was like, oh, okay, this is a shoulder thing. At a guy behind me who had the broadcast on. He shows me the replay, and it was like, yeah, that looks ugly. And then, obviously, we find out shoulder separation. Uh, and so, yeah, it's going to, like, I mean, they're, they're putting the two weeks on there as kind of a formality, but, yeah, I think that's it for him. Okay. On a positive note, Franco Escobar, he's been playing well, third goal of the season on Saturday. Uh, talk about his impact and what he's going to need to do if they're going to win Thursday. Well, look, Franco is is funny because, I mean, his his job title is to be a defender, you know, to play in that back line. But Franco loves to to jet up the field, get up ahead, and be a part of the offensive game plan. And you know, it's one of those at times it drives you crazy, especially at times you saw him during the regular season where you're, you know, there's moments where you're like. Franco, what are you doing? But then, just like he did, you know, in the playoffs before, he comes through clutch, ends up being the game winner. I don't, I don't think he'll he'll continue that against Philadelphia. I mean, he'll still be involved with the offense. I mean, he's just that that part of his brain's never going to stop. Um, but if Atlanta is relying 
relying on him to come through clutch like he did against New England, well, they've got another thing coming. Although I don't think that will be that will be necessary come Thursday. Okay, Thursday's game. Speaking of that, sixty-six thousand one hundred and fourteen people were in attendance for Saturday's playoff game. Atlanta United—they're doing records. I mean, they led the MLS in attendance for the third straight season, averaging fifty-two thousand five hundred and ten for the seventeen home games. It, the, the home field advantage. How much is it going to play a factor against Philadelphia? Do you see this game turning out different than it did in August? I know reports were saying since they played seven games back in August that United was tired a little bit. Why do you think this home field advantage is going to play a difference a little bit in the outcome of Thursday's game? I mean, I it's never a bad thing to play at <laughs> home. You know, it always helps, especially when you're in front of record crowds like you see at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. It, it's never going to be a bad thing. It's always going to be something, that, just a little something extra that, that helps out. However, is it really going to matter in this match? I mean, you know, probably not any more than it would any other opponent that they were playing. Uh, the the thing to, to look at is the last time they played Philadelphia Union, granted it was a 3-1 loss, but Ezekiel Barco was not healthy at that time and he did not play he was not a part of that and pt martinez was a part of that team and you know i guess the offense wasn't clicking quite the same that it has been toward the later part of the season um and so you know you've got ezekiel back and just quite honestly pt martinez isn't really a part of this coaching staff's game plan for the playoffs for what I see moving forward. Um, and so, you know, it's really hard to judge that August match and kind of compare it too much to where these two teams are now. Um, you know, I I like Atlanta in this one. I think they're, they're going to be just fine. Um, and sure, the, the home crowd will, will definitely play in just like it, it does for any home match. Okay. Do you have a specific score for me? Scoring-wise, I, I don't know. I, so, I kind of hate to, to give those scoring predictions, but if I had to, I think Atlanta will, will essentially flip the score on that August match, and it'll be 3-1 in Atlanta's favor. Oh wow, that that'll be that'll be a big one. Wow, three to one. Okay, Caleb, I, I like that prediction.